Ride, 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 let it ride. Happy Friday, Bill. Happy, Happy Friday, Friday, Bill. Hopefully you get a PlayStation 5 today, Bill. I'm yeah. praying for you. Uh, no, I'm going to be on my way up to Burlington today, Friday. So I don't think I'm going to be looking for PlayStation 5s. So when you leave for the weekend, does the flag go down at half staff, like when the Queen of uh, Queen Elizabeth leaves? Uh-uh. Oh, no? Uh-uh. No, oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't guns know it's a tinder whore army. Pew. Guns always locked on the flagpole. Click oh, clack. Gotcha. Click clack, motherfuckers. He doesn't like to rate. He doesn't like to let people know when he's gone. Gotcha. Because it's just a full reign of homeless that roll in there and take shits on. No, I just booby stuff. trap everything. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not booby on trap? my watch. Daytime? Booty trap. I booty trap it. Well, he's seen Wolf of Wall Street when the guy, the the uh, what was that? The butler had gay sex and had gay an orgy. Sex <laughs> an orgy. Dude, I he doesn't want his Tinder whore ar- He doesn't want his Tinder army to do that while he's gone. I fucking love that movie. That's a great. That movie. is that is one of my top five favorite movies. Uh-huh. Of all time. I fucking love that movie. It's so long, and I would I sit through it every time it's on. And especially I, I, like I want to know how much of that shit's legitimately true. He has probably a lot. It's he, Scorsese. He swear, well, yeah, Belfort swears up and down it's true, but man, some of that shit is ridiculous. But that when he flew out all the whores to Vegas, got a, it cost him a million bucks with all the whores and the damage they caused on all the suites. Jesus Christ. They just spent a house on a fucking bachelor party. Love I uh, I've been to Vegas a lot because of work, and I never understand the appeal. First of all, I don't like to gamble. Um, second of all, obviously, I'm not doing that but i think that's the only way you have fun in vegas what do you say Unless you gamble or whores whores both like the idea of high rolling in a penthouse with a bunch of loose women and drugs i think is how people have fun in, in uh las vegas i don't know else you have fun that's oh, really, yeah. really so easy gambling. to get it's so easy i remember when i was on the street some guys like hey i got this i was like how much he's like here come with me and i think my girlfriend at the time she's like what the fuck are you doing i was like walk away I went and grabbed some drugs around the side of the street. I didn't care. I, I can't I mean, wait I'm, for you to be people's man, sexiest man alive. I'm good for <laughs> Vegas. I'm good in Vegas for like two days. After that, I'm like, all right, I'm 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 good with this. Yeah, because you like, sleep. You can't sleep. You don't sleep, and like I'll, I'll gamble. Are we just moving on the fact that <laughs> Bill discarded his girlfriend with a bitch and went and found some horse. And uh, then he and then he gets mad. Listeners, at us if you haven't it, for it. listen, listeners, if you haven't heard Bill talk, I didn't say I went and grabbed whores. I said I went and grabbed some drugs. There's a way difference. <laughs> oh, we thought you were. I thought you were talking. About... Oh, I knew. I knew it was drugs. Oh, dude, okay. it was so easy. The second you walk on the strip. No, this was this. But... All right, welcome to the Silver Mind Sports Show. Friday <laughs> headlines, March fifth. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> was it snowing in Vegas? No, not the last time I was there. The time before, though. This is all you need to have a I good time. I went in the winter. The only, ah. thing, the only thing you need to have gotcha. a good time. Right. Up on hope, down with dope. Can That's my motto. Just, Jesus. Fuck <laughs> I'm not saying anything. It's Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were uh, segueing into something. The only thing you need to have a good time is White Birch Brewing. White Birch Brewing out of Nashville, New Hampshire. They got sours. They got stouts. I just had their brown ale. It was delicious. They got a brown ale that was delicious, according to Billy Trash Can. And if Bill says it's delicious, it is delicious. You know it is because he talks to pimps who give him cocaine in Las Vegas. (laughs) If you are looking for a good time and can't get to Vegas, head on down to Nashua. I'm not saying that you can get cocaine pimps in Nashua or White Birch. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying you can get delicious you can. beer. It's Nashua. Okay. Uh, I am saying you can get delicious beer. Uh, it's on tap. You can get it to go if you see it in a store. Um, this particular time, don't tell us that. Don't tell them we sent you. But uh-uh. anytime after this, tell them the Simple Mind boys sent you. Okay. Jesus Christ, Bill. Um, <laughs> why don't you talk to me about the Bruins there, bud? They they lost. <laughs> they lost in a shootout. Two one. Oh, Cavs. Shit. Cavs yeah. still have their number. Still have their number. I mean, you got a point. You know, this is Jane O'Chara's first game back in Boston. It would have been nicer if there was fans there. They had a nice video treat uh tribute. Why would there. they do that? Why would they do that with no fans there? That was what do you dumb. mean? Like are it was you still living in the world back, that COVID's gonna be first... done in three weeks? 
Like he oh, might I'm not, just saying, wait till the might... next team. Well, whatever. Wait so till he retires. Just act like he's not back. No, yeah, that dude, was he's the right. weird. 15 years here, as much as like he sucked on the ice in the last couple of years, he deserve, deserves the respect they gave him. He, fans or no fans, it was good to see. Yeah, the play on the ice was fucking terrible. Charlie Coyle got late scratch with COVID right before it. I think the offense kind of struggled. You saw Krejci and Grizzly kind of come back, but Krejci looks rusty. Basically, I mean, you you had no nothing of any offense in the first period at all. You, so you're going to have I mean, a shot until 10 minutes yeah. into the game. You're lucky to get a point. So it was a good, you get something out of it. I mean, you're going to be battling the caps all year. I mean, you fell behind when your least, your recent skate, you went four, you know, lost four out of five. You fell two points back. So I think you're, you know, you're one point back right now. So, I mean, you're still right up there. I believe you have two games in hand or one game in hand at this point. So, I mean, you're right where you need to be, but let's just hope that coil shit is uh, not long-term. Hopefully it's something, you know, maybe come, close contact because he, he finally was getting hot where they needed to and again for a team that's you know 26 and 5 on 5 scoring losing coil right now is not ideal because Krejci coming back is not scoring goals he's only assisted this year and you need coil to do something on the on the offensive end and especially you know in the second and third line well we've seen it any any uh top six winger goes down it really puts this team in a bind especially with Kashik still you know still out so yeah, you know, it's a good point. Coyle going down probably hurt them in that game. Um, you know, I think Tuca kept them in it. I think Tuca had a really nice game. Um, but, yeah, you, you're, you're thin. You're thin on the top line. And I put this in the email. If Jake DeBrusque is on this team after the trade deadline, I'm, I'm going to stick Damn. a fucking needle in my Yeah, I'm, I'm back to being complete and utter hater. Hey, of, uh, Jake welcome I had back, high, Billy Badwards. I had snaps. high hopes. I had high hopes for him coming in. I thought he would do something. He's playing with some a lot of talent. They've tried him, you know, on the first line. They've tried him with Charlie Coyle. They've tried him with David Krejci. Those are a lot of big playmakers, and he, he just can't, but, but blows. He can't do it. And, again, it just – you know, 2015 draft, he was one of your picks. You know, that's another one. You know, we've mentioned, you know, Zorbro and him. We need him to play some meaningful minutes. And right now you go play meaningful minutes with zero production. Which is yeah, weird because he's like on the tra- – like any trade scenario that they're talking about, it involves around him. Well, he's got potential. He's yeah. young. He's only 24, All GMs, 25. Yeah, GMs are saying like a change of scenery would help out his game. But, yeah. Right now, he's not doing anything for the Bruins. Why not put him in any trade? Yeah, I mean, he might be Whatever rental piece you need, yeah. Yeah, he might be fragile with Cassidy. I mean, you think Cassidy's not one – I mean, he's not one to, you know, beat around the bush. He's going to call you out on your bullshit, and he's going to bench you, and he's going to do all that. I mean – you know, he might not be, he's a little Canadian boy. He might not be able to handle that, the criticism that's coming his way, especially out in the, in the media. And, you know, you, you've seen him score 25, 26 goals, but right now, again, I'm going to mention again, you're 26 in the league and five and five scoring. This is where you need to brusque. He doesn't play a lot of meaningful power play minutes. He's, you know, kind of on that second line. So you need him to score five and five and he's not doing it. I don't know what you can do. You put him with Marshan and Bergeron and see, you know, but then you're taking away the, the erection line. Who's the only line that's scoring. So, I mean, I you got to do something. That, Bill. You know, he had that look in the third period last night, and I don't know. Is he tight? Um, I, he I could know. have tight butthole. He's a, he's, he could have tight butthole syndrome. He, he is a – look, this is why I say at the trade deadline, if he's not moved this year, then I think you're, I think you're making a mistake, even if it's not for a big splash. You could I get think, something. You could at least get a first, I think and you that can get the, him in a bigger uh, deal too. I think that the sample size – of Jake DeBrusque not working in Boston is big enough to say he's not going to work in Boston. Yep. I mean, but, he's five, six he's, years now. To your point, Bill, he's got enough potential and his age and his contract is okay enough for another team to go, yeah, we'll give it a shot because we're in a position to give it a shot. So he's the guy. He's the guy. And everybody knows it. So you're probably not going to get the best return, but go get something because he's literally doing nothing. He's literally doing a team Nothing. like Florida, too, you know, they got, I forget what their captain, I forget his name. He's a young guy that you can kind of lock up long term if you make a move as a center. Uh, his name he's on the last year. Yeah, he's last year of yeah, his deal. His name's just slipping my mind. But Alex. I mean, uh... You want to throw a guy, you know, that's a perfect spot for a guy like DeBrusque. You saw Riley Smith went down to Florida, kind of flourished down there in obscurity. You know, he I think he had a good run on Vegas, too. Wow, their really nice Barkov. Cars. Barkov. Barkov, yeah. So I mean, he, he's you, been he, linked. I like Barkov he's been, a lot. He's been linked again, and you can probably get him for DeBrusque again. You you have cap space next year with Krejci going, but you know, go to obscurity with fucking Jake DeBrusque. That's it. Bill, did you bring home the word of the day calendar? Flourish and obscurity no, within Lou, two. Lou, Lou sends him a banana and the word of the day every day while he's gone. 
via email, smart, via, via a GIF email. Yeah. Hey, quick question for both of you. DeBrusque and a first round pick for Taylor Hall for a rental piece for one year. Fine, fuck it. I just, I'm done on DeBrusque. I'm out. Wait, wait did you see a first? No, yeah, you first. can get them. You oh, can probably no, get them for first round. Yeah, I wouldn't do it first, especially. It's Buffalo. Buffalo's going to rebuild. They're going to want a high, uh, high round yeah, pick. Yeah, but Taylor Hall. Yeah, but you're going to get a, you're going to get first for Jack Eichel. I, I, right now, the way Taylor Hall's playing, you're not going to get him for that, and you can't afford him right now. So yes, I mean... they can. They can afford him if they do the Jake DeBrus deal. They can afford him. Yeah, but you're going to so. You can it's get a, rid of you can get some bad contracts off the books. Maybe a John Moore in that deal too. No, no, it's three and a half. You, you got three and a half room. No, it's I know, like but what I'm saying, what I'm saying, if you want to, if you want to give up a first or anything like that, you you're gonna throw in a shitty contract. Yeah, we'll give you a first, but you have to take I John understand. Moore or shit like or, or crap deal like that back. Yeah, give yourself some, a little bit of cushion on yeah, the on the yeah camp. yeah. I so I mean that I think that's the only way they're gonna give up a first for Taylor Hall unless they could do like a. Uh, David Backus type move. Here you go. Take yeah. his contract off. To your hands. to your greater point, right? Uh, player for player. Yeah, I know that. I know that Taylor Hall has um, is what he is at thirty one. I think now thirty thirty one. Complete yeah. disappointment. Um, has gone on to Buffalo. Gave them COVID. Is just an asshole. Yeah. We've been shitting on him forever. Um, but but you want to talk about uh, underachieving versus underachieving? Change of scenery. We said this in the yeah. off season. I was for Taylor Hall because I think yeah, your locker room too. is good enough to take him on. I still believe that, especially for half a season. He, he's a Hart Trophy winner. I mean, he was New Jersey. Maybe you a can light, an, ago, yeah. light a fire under his ass. Maybe not. But you. But to the point we just made, I think we can say you're not going to this coaching staff. This team is not going to get out of Jake DeBrusque what you think you should get out of or what you could get out of Jake DeBrusque. Maybe another team can. So yeah, if you got to take on some asshole or a bad contract for a swap. Yes, I don't know if it's worth a first, but like Bill said, maybe if you can dump some you bad salary. Honestly, worth. though, I'll tell you what, real quick too. You can probably do it without giving up DeBrusque. If they're just looking to get younger in, in draft picks, give them a first. Maybe throw in a later round draft pick. You have Buffalo can eat half his salary, you know. So I mean, he could they could eat at least four million dollars of that if they're desperate to get rid of him, and especially for a draft pick, have Buffalo eat some of that salary, have it on their books. It's only one year. I think they can stretch it till next year. Boom, you get it that way, and you can actually kind of keep DeBrusque on, that, on a, a move like that too, especially if you can throw in and some – And then move them from – And then and then try to move them around, yeah. Um, all right, well, it'll be interesting to see. I hope they do that. A couple more Bruins pieces. We're a little late on this, so try to be quick, Bill. Uh, what do we think of Frederick? So he got the nut chat from Ovechkin. If nut anyone chat. doesn't think that that was a cheap shot – That was cheap. I mean, he got fined. Five grand, which is – on the CBA, nice, nice negotiating NHLPA because five grand is the max you can be fined in yeah, the NHL. It's, it's Ovechkin's great. making what, ten million a year? Oh yeah, ten or twelve. And is somewhere five in that grand is the fucking highest penalty. I, I'd be fucking hitting everyone's nuts every goddamn. <laughs> well, then game. you start losing games. Once you start Suck losing it, bitch. games, Boom, yeah. right in the nuts. Five you start losing grand. games. Yeah. Oh my the five god. Five is nothing. That's nothing anyway, to him. Nothing. Uh, so uh, thoughts on Trent Frederick? Uh, did you like that? played you like him getting in Ovechkin's face and I'm looking at Trent, Fred, Trent Frederick we've talked about this the youth of the center position in, in, in Bruins is lacking so uh you got Stadnika you got Frederick you got Beecher uh Bleacher Beecher, Beecher right yeah. uh hurt but you know a high prospect if Trent Frederick profiles as this agitator and ends up being your fourth line center your Corrali or or something for your foreseeable future maybe he sees some time at third line as a as a energy guy is that good enough not for where he was drafted. You know, he's a late first round draft pick. And, you know, the the comp coming out of him was a third, fourth line center. I mean, it's what yeah, was it's his good. starting trophy, but what was his um, what was his skill set? What was he known for coming out coming out in the draft? You know, just, just kind of being a tough guy. I mean, again, he's just kind of one of those gritty third or fourth line centers. That's it. I mean, it was kind of a reach. You know, and you're seeing when you're getting a third, fourth line guy. I mean, that's I think that's what a ceiling is. He, I heard, I read something where he's been comp to Tom Wilson. You know, I, I, I don't see it there. I, I like the toughness out of him. I mean, it's good for the energy line, but until he could start scoring goals, that's as best he's going to get. I mean, he's only got what three on the season, I think. And then, but isn't you know, he exactly what they need? We saw in the Blue Series, they got pushed around. They had no, yeah. but they had no. They, they got rid of their enforcers because the game got rid of enforcers, and those guys don't really exist anymore, except for maybe. Yeah, a Tom you need Wilson. it with Kevin Miller out too. I mean, he's the other guy that's. Supposed but you, to be you a still tough need guy. tough guys yep. in hockey. Yep. You still yeah, need tough did, guys yeah. in hockey. Yeah, Bottom you're line. gonna see it, and I mean, he's got—he's more, uh, you know, skillful 
offensively than the Sean Thorntons and all the other tough guys that, you know, the Bruins have ran through. And with Kevin Miller, that knee doesn't sound great. So you're going to need a little bit of toughness. And I think that's what you're getting out of him. I like his play. You know, you shouldn't even have been in the lineup to start and he's played great. You know, I, I like it. You're seeing him getting a little bit of penalty kill minutes too. So, I mean, yeah, you're, I, I think his ceiling's very, very low. But you need the yeah. Again, well, I guess that's why guys. I ask if if he turn if he turns out to he's be a Chris a fourth, Wagner type. I think ten to twelve hmm. goals a year. But he might be one. Of, you might be one of those. You might be one of those locker room guys that you know, especially in Boston, we like and we need. And and it's an, he's something that you don't miss until he's gone. Type of guy. That's c- kind of how I see him. And I'd, who's I'd who's younger of the two out of Trent and Chris? Trent Frederick's younger. Yeah. Chris, Chris Wagner's been in the league for a while. Ray, uh, Bruins are talking about extending Tuca and Halak. Now, I, I don't, I don't like to pull from other radio shows all the time, but I heard Felger and Mass talking about this. And they just made a good point. Number one, they, if they're looking to make a, a move in the deadline, both these guys are on expiring deals, and you have the expansion draft next year, so you need one of these guys signed. I don't necessarily think that this has to do with their long-term goals of looking at Tuka Rask and give him another seven-year deal. I think they want to get an understanding of what they're going to cost next year and how they can plan ahead. So uh, I know we are on the quest for the butthole tattoo, um, but I know that, Ray, you're not the biggest Tuka guy. So um, I don't know. Any thoughts on that before we move on? No, it makes sense with the uh, expansion coming on. I believe they're making it more so that you can protect more of your players because obviously what happened with Vegas, I thought they were doing it more – uh, you, can only protect, still- you can only protect seven guys, and anybody with a no mo, no trade closet is automatically protected. And any guy, I think, on like an entry level, with certain amount of service time that way. So they they did toughen up a little bit, but not much. Gotcha. So yeah, basically, if you have to have both goalies out there, I mean, at least if they take one, you get to keep the other. So would you keep Tuca because he's the older guy? That they'd probably. I don't know. I don't know how that all works out. I don't, think, yeah, yeah. I don't think either of them would be necessarily an attraction for an expansion team, but Tuca might be. Tuka well, Flurry, might... Flurry would got taken in the expansion draft. Yeah, that was more contract related because he had, he was on a big deal. And the problem with, you know, I, I've been all for signing Tuca, you know, for an extension two or three. All right, years we got to move on because we're high on, on we're we're, we're long on, on the we got a lot to get to, Bill. And I sorry to interrupt mm-hmm. you, but uh, give me give me your just off the top of your head, quick contract you'd give Tuca as an extension. Uh, two for f- four and a half a year. All right. Well, wow. he's not going to take two. Would you put him? Would you give him four? Would you give him four years to two at four and a half? Was he three thirty three? Right. I'd give him three. I wouldn't give him the four because I think in three years your guys are going to be ready. But right now your pipeline is shit. So at least you can get another couple bridge year deal. And I think three years is a good number. It takes. What do you think the Bruins want to do? Uh, you think the Bruins between will give the two, I, th- I think they'll go two to three range. Honestly, I think Sweeney's been pretty good with his cap and especially signing his own guys. I would give him four years if your number comes lower than four and a half. So if you can get them at three, three point five, I'd go. F- I'd give them that extra year. You're still saying money, but you're getting them cheaper on the cap. Ray, do you think Tuca has enough I don't give a fuck attitude to take three if they offer him three? Like uh, three know. and four seventy five, a little bit more money. I don't know. I mean he made his money. I mean, why why not just take the hometown discount right now? You know? Yeah. We'll see. Um he's uh, Bill, you've said it. I know that we were down on Tuca Rass last year because of the bubble and obviously everything that he and the pool boy. encompasses in terms of poop his pool boy and pooping his pants, but he is your best bet and he in you know, he gave you he got you a point last night, so um, all right, we got to go quick here. Let's move on. Celtics uh, sweep the Clippers. Uh, they beat the the Clippers without Kawhi the other night. What was that, Wednesday? 117 to 112. A uh, couple quick ones here. Has Robert Williams arrived? And can we buy the cheese on a guy like Pritchard? Teague has stepped up, made some buckets. The bench has stepped up in this little flourish of wins. It looks more like the team that we saw over the past three or four years as opposed to that shitty, 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 terrible run that we burned them for. Are we buying the cheese on this, or is this something closer to what the team – I'm not saying Jeff Teague is good. I'm just saying is this closer to what the team is and could and should be? Envisioned. Or are they – right, are they just – is this is this just a flash in the pan? They'll go back to Sucktown after the, after the break. I'd like to go real quick and say I'm sorry to Bill because I believe you're all right, Bill. Robert Williams will be the biggest trade piece that the Celtics have to offer to any I team. I said that too, Bill. Uh, Ray, I would like it. I would also like yeah. an apology. Well, he's my stepfather, so I always like Fair. to apologize to him first. Thanks. But uh, yeah, Robert Williams. I mean, 11 straight games that he's played. That's a career high for him. He's never played in 11 straight games, so he's <laughs> playing really good. Oh, bless you, child. You. But yeah, so he's playing great. I mean, he's the athletic big that would be uh, mm. wanted in the league. Uh, Pritchard. 
and Teague, they're a flash in the pan. They're going to get hot for several games. And they're going to get cold for several games. So I don't, I don't think this is going to be what they do throughout the season. But, yeah, it's nice to see that they're doing it right now and that they're hot. Bill, Tatum's gassed. Tatum is generally gassed. He looked like shit against the Clippers. He looked like shit against uh, the game they won against the Wizards. He just closed it out. Um, but he's going to the All-Star game. If, if him and, and Jalen Brown play extensive minutes in the All-Star game, can we rightfully crucify them? Yeah, absolutely. You've been <laughs> bitching about – you've been using COVID as an excuse since you came back about why your game has been lacking, and then Jalen Brown's got tendonitis. This is a me first move. You've been struggling. You're barely over 500. What, you're one game over 500 right now? You're barely hanging on to the sixth seed. And, you know, get healthy. Get Rest yourself for the, the long stretch. you got a lot of games. you got a lot of back-to-backs coming up. Now let's go. We have 40 games left, you know, and it's 40 games in what 70 days or something like that. Lot, 74 yeah. Every, days. So, I mean, every get team healthy. has a Let's really, be, has a really, uh, you know, intensive stretch coming up. We have up the here easiest the schedule. End. Yeah, but still, if you're if you're managing Kemba without with the back to backs and now you're you're worried about Jalen Brown's knee, you have which again, 10 and 9 sucks, it's going to linger all year. And now, Jason, you know. Uh, Tatum is bitching that he's gas from COVID. Make up your fucking mind. If Danny, Danny, and, and Brad need to grow some balls and say, guys, you got to sit this shit out. I get it. It's the highest honor. I get it. It's going to be networking, trying to get some star players here, but don't. That's at the cost of your success in down the road. Because if you if you get hurt in these stupid okay. games playing meaning fucking skills competitions and all this bullshit, no. He better be the first one pulled. He better be the first one pulled during the All Star well, game because he's a starter. He better Tatum, be the first yeah. one. Yeah, Tatum yeah, started right. Yeah, he better be the first one sitting. Jalen. Uh, Jalen Brown denied being in the dunk contest because he wants to focus on his health, but he accepted being in the three point contest. So, and then Tatum was trying to well, less jumping, the... less jumping with the, yeah. Uh, and then the... Tatum's <laughs> doing this, the skills competition, which is, you know, you want to do it as fast as you can. It's like, yeah. dude, come on, just sit. Did he lose down. to uh poor no, Porzingis the other day? No, he, well, he, he won, won in the half court shot. Half court. First oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Then, then he but lost Jason the Tatum game. does nothing as fast as he can. His lethargic play drives me insane. Dookie. Um, all right, uh, let's get into the beef of the Celtics stuff. Uh, Celtics Twitter is in fucking La La Land yet again. Like they every hate year. us. Oh God, they hate us. Um, so now the now they are in on Jeremy, spelled J E R A M I. Which thank God I listened to something today because I was going Jamiroquai Jerob- on that. Fucking I thought it was Jamiroquai. 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 Grant. Grant. <laughs> Wasn't he like moonwalking in that video, right? Was that? No, that it was video? a bunch of treadmills. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah, like, it was like yeah, moonwalking. Like yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck that guy. Uh, anyway, stupid Jeremy. Hat. And yeah, the Jeremy. hat. Yeah, the, the top the hat. Stupid fucking hat. Was it that hat or hat? Yeah. Everyone had that at the Deer Field. Deer Field Fair. Come on, Deer Field Fair. Yeah. It was the Dr. Seuss hat. It's racist now. Yeah, no, Dr. Seuss is canceled. Can't say that anymore. Jeremy Grant. That's a beep. Seven twenty-six. Got it. Jeremy Grant. Uh, from the Pistons, who's averaging 23 points, has been an, uh, a breakout star this year. Was with the Nuggets last year, or with the last several years, I want to say. Um, he's now on the Celtics wish list. And then again, uh, Nikola Vucevic out of Orlando. Here's, let me start this. Both of these players, both of their teams have come and said outright, we are not no. moving these guys. We are getting Jeremy Jacob up the ass. The Celtics are pushing the highest names possible to get everyone jazzed and psyched. And then Danny Ainge will come out and say they wanted too much. No shit. No, they're not even trade pieces. These teams don't even want to trade these fucking guys. You're just, you could come out and say, I want to get LeBron James for all. It's, it's the same goddamn thing. You're not going to get him. Just like, be prepared the for the Blake fuck? Griffin ever, boys. That's that's what. Not getting Blake is... Griffin. So hold on, Bill. Sorry to interrupt because I, I know you didn't hear this because it was right before the show. But I watched the pregame for the Celtics and Scalabrini came on and said, forget these two fucking guys. That's stupid. Basically, the guy you have to keep your eye on is Harrison Barnes. The Celtics want Harrison Barnes. They're in fake communication with the Kings. The Kings are sending them back names that they don't want. And it's all to get Harrison Barnes. And that's the goal. And that's the plan. And if that's the real it. plan, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm Bring absolutely some leadership. In. He's got a couple of rings. Let's go. You need him. You need, that, you need that wing position player, too. You, you're lacking with, with Hayward, especially. You're seeing it right now. If you had Gordon Hayward on this team, you're, you know, you're one or two in the East. As so much as you hate it, right? Fuck you, Bill. He, they're not one or two. He'd be hurt. He, he'd sprain his vagina. He'd be out fucking six to eight weeks. Fuck you. 
How Harrison. dare you? How dare you? We've been having a great show and you bring that up. Harrison oh. Barnes, uh, they would be better with uh, Gordon Hayward. He might be hurt. Harrison Barnes is the guy. Uh, I mean, I was. The other day too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was a little bit down on him at first. His contract doesn't make sense, but as we mentioned a couple of shows before, you got the TPE. You're in. You're going to be in the in the luxury tax next year anyway. I don't understand all the conversation about avoiding it this year. Like you, you, you need to make the moves that are that are going to better your team. You've been out of the tax since you traded KG and Pierce. You got enough money, Wick, and he Wick has come out and said we're not afraid of the tax. So I don't understand all the conversation. How much about do you have to the hard the cap? You're like twenty eight million. Twenty to the hard- twenty something. No, it's like yeah, twenty so twenty two. It's not the whole TPE. So you're fine. You can take him on and you got to move a little bit of salary. It's fine. He can play defense. He can play versatile defense. He can hit big shots. So what would you move for him? What would you move for him? Langford, Tice. I'd I'd move, I'd literally move anything outside of the Jays, Kemba, and Smart for Harrison Barnes. I'm not saying Smart's immovable. What about Robert Williams? I mean, he's kind of right now, the way he's playing, he's right in that kind of not move. Right now, oh, I mean, he's the best fucking chip you have. If any, know, anyone I mean, wants to get kinda, suckered uh, into the Robert Wood, Danny's going to get suckered in. Watch. I don't know if he will. Danny I don't know if he will. Bullshit. And 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 say, he, Robert Williams would be awesome in Sacramento with DeAndre Fox. Oh, yeah. Who's the other one? Who's the other guy? They got Bagley, Bagley Jr. Another Dookie, right? Yeah, Marvin Bagley. Um, there's another. Oh, guy. he played for Kentucky. There's Those another guy on set that's on Sacramento that Scal mentioned that I have to look up again. I didn't recognize the name. Uh, but Fors- Forsberg said, could they possibly get him? If you put Robert Williams in a deal, then yeah, maybe you expect a- another guy back, or maybe you expect that salaries not to match. The-, the Celtics might, you know, try to get a little bit more back than just Harrison Barnes. But yes, I'm trading Rob- Robert Williams in this fucking trade. I've heard Buddy Heald. This is exactly what you want. Orleans, but I take they're... Harrison Barnes over Buddy Heald at this point because I think Buddy Heald is another Buddy fucking prima yeah, donna I, I millennial douchebag. I need. I want Harrison Barnes. He's got rings. Harrison Barnes plays a four. Yeah. You can you put out yeah, a four. I'm yeah, in. I'm, I'm in. I oh, mean, um, I put this on there just, you know, uh, there's a really great blog on civilmindsports.com called Danny Doesn't Suck. Uh, it's uh, not Bill's. You can't mention it. I'm sorry. You can mention whatever you want. God forbid I plug one. Fuck off. <laughs> Danny Doesn't Suck. I haven't showered in two days. Lick my nuts. <laughs> just go check it out. <laughs> you got a squirter. Sp- Woo! <laughs> Almost put that one out, baby. Speaking, <laughs> of, lick- speaking of licking nuts. How wet do you think James Harden's balls are after he just left Houston? He went what back the for the first time. They? They're first retiring of all, this is, James what are Harden's they doing number in for Houston. What? This what is, is not the first time. There? This is not the first time his jersey has been retired in How Houston. Well, in the strip club. We the know. strip club. Yeah. Shit. Shit. What God. a terrible organization. Hey, you fucking sucked and you pre- – like held us in like uh terrorist negotiations for fucking how many years you were here we're gonna you retire your number into the fucking ground, ground. yeah I- i'll tell no, you what's what, the though, owner's the... name do you guys remember the owners uh i forget but the city of houston though when Harden left they all went to his restaurants yelp page and gave him one star reviews <laughs> <laughs> yeah he yeah. held him in he held him in ransom the, what like what is the owner's move here i'm a terrible racist but so i'm gonna i'm gonna take uh, an african-american and, and put his, and put his jersey in there because he was the highest scorer in the nba for a few years what a joke. MVP. that's like the red MVP. sox hiring a black female coach <laughs> check and check how many boxes can we get in this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah just absolutely pathetic um all right any any more thoughts on that let me let me leave you with this one so i did write that um Blog Danny blog. doesn't suck. His drafting is good. He's, he's a top five GM drafter in the league in the past 10 years. His moves have been good. He's created a team. We've gone over this. Kyrie neutered him. He's had no balls for the last three years. If he does not do a deal this year, I will be on the Danny sucks bandwagon. I will fire Danny. Danny sucks or fire Danny? No, I'm not firing Danny. Oh, okay. Just Danny sucks. He's yeah. on the hot seat. He will be. He's on the if he does seat. nothing in this offseason, he will absolutely. If you have, he does if nothing you, at this trade deadline, he should be fired in the offseason. No, no, no yeah, trade deadline, is, the first, trade deadline first is what I mean. Yeah, you right. know that you know, and I know that he has his eye on this trade exception and what all and the all of these offseason free agents that are coming up and the uh, luxury tax is going down because of COVID. He has his eye on all of that shit, but it's burnt him before. Can't and and you will lose this season. You can't rely on fucking semi Ojale. 
I just, or Peyton Pritchard, who's Steve Blake 2.0. Even Should we the just throw Sammy Ojale in anyone, any trade we have? Just, be yes. like, hey, just take Get him. him. Robert just, Langford, just, just, too. Take people, people value him. Boom. Romeo. Even, even it's if Romeo. It's a, even if it's Robert. Even if it's the buyout market, even if he goes and gets some schlub veteran in the buyout market, I will give him heart partial credit at this schlub. point because he's done like nothing. Word, schlub. He's done nothing. Schlong, uh, schlub. <sighs> fuck the Celtics. Can, Can we talk football? Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let's talk Pats. So Great segue, Bill. Excellent segue. Look, another blog on the Civil Mind Sports Show. There's a flood coming, and it's coming to New England, and it's coming via Bill Belichick. Cap casualties in the NFL. You want to talk about Jeremy Jacob? Hot and heavy. So you think we're getting Jacob by the Patriots? You two think we're getting uh-huh. Jacob by the Patriots? Well, I think the in I think, what way? You don't think that? Okay, go no, ahead. no, I don't, I don't, I don't. I just think what? What? You're linking what, every what, name. No, you're wait, 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 wait. What buyout would want to come here? Because Greg Bedard came out pretty much said, yeah, Jimmy G is number one. But if they don't get Jimmy G, Cam Newton will be the quarterback of the New England Patriots. What Kyle Rudolph, Golden Tate, any Kyle of these Rudolph free agents? already said he wants to come here when he got here. Why he he would you come Greg here Bedard with Cam Newton? Did, Greg Bedard did because not Because these guys want to play. The these, yes, these he guys want to play for Bill. And I'm sorry, if Cam can't throw, putting a target like Cam, uh, Kyle Rudolph in the back of that end zone is huge. That's where he scores all his touchdowns. He's a big red zone threat. Give Cam, I get it. He can't throw that. Bill does not. He's questioning his shoulder, but. You know, you miss out on Jimmy G on the free agent market right now. As much as I fucking hate it, he he looks like the best option. We've mentioned it before. Worst case scenario, he's back, and I don't think it's going to so be hold, worst case at this point. So hold on, because Ray's stupid ass jumped the gun. Um, I, what I'm talking in, in the in the flood in in the cap casualty is a real thing. So the cap is going down. All of these teams with with high cap uh, numbered players that have no more guaranteed money, they're getting cut. Kyle Rudolph, Golden Tate, um, uh, who's the other, Jared Cook. So you're 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 going to have a, and this is just the beginning. I forget who I saw. They said next week you're going to before free agency you're going to see well, Jarrell, uh, a shit ton of too. people being let go. So you're you're going to have a pool of players, a pool of veteran players that have made a lot of money up until this Proven point. Players, okay, that have made a lot of money up until this point that are that need to sign somewhere that need to sign somewhere. And at that point in time, you are dealing with a player that just needs a job and needs to get paid. And the Patriots have positioned themselves to have a top five cap situation in the NFL. Now, I understand anybody who listens to Boston Sports Radio thinks that the cap is crap, but it's not necessarily. Not the rest of the teams. They got to go. They have to fit under a number literally at some point. So these guys are going to need places to go, and the Patriots have money. So they're going to get some of them. I don't know who. But they're going to get some of them, and some of them are going to be names. Kyle Rudolph is a name. As much as he's maybe on the back end and not uh, a trade for Odell Beckham Jr. or something. The only thing that the only thing that sucks is you don't have the Tom Brady pull anymore. You know what I mean? You you saw these guys, you know, take a play, come, pay guys take to pay here. cuts to come play. You have a chance to win a Super Bowl, and I, I get it. Bill can kind of overpay, and, and it, this is right up his wheelhouse. These are guys that he wants to bring, especially in a rebuilding year. He's gonna, you see him last year. He brought in some young talent on the on the defense. You're gonna build up that, and these these casualties are what you want. You you just drafted two young tight ends. A guy like Kyle Rudolph has spent 10 years in this league. He's 31 years old, but he still has a lot left in the tank. Pairing him with the two young guys is is great. I mean, this is what. It's right up his wheelhouse with all these camp casualty guys. This is it. I this think is the what other, he lives on dies I think off the, of. The other point is you're right that they don't have the Brady effect if for guys to come in and take less. They're not going to take less because of the Brady effect. They're going to take less because no one else can pay them. That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the idea of having 62 million in cap space as fake as you want to call it. It's more than other people's fake cap space. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not going to have it. Like you said, there's so not going to be enough teams to sign. You won't get, you won't no. get the highest of ends. You never get the highest events because the Patriots don't pay for the height. You're not getting Allen Robinson, No, but God, the Kyle so Rudolphs, sick. the Golden Samuel. Tates, these guys, Curtis Samuel, like we can go through the list. We maybe we'll do it next show. These cap casualties of guys that have been released, made some money looking to get on a team and, and, and be competitive. But you are right, Ray. They do need a quarterback. And Greg, Greg Bedard, from the reports I read, didn't come out and say Cam Newton was going to be their quarterback. He said he hates all – they said the Patriots kind of hate all of the free agent options. And Cam's a free agent. So I read that as Cam's included in that. Their number one option is Jimmy G, and they're waiting on San Francisco to make a move because they know they hate fucking Jimmy G, and they know they want to make a move, and the Patriots – the, the, the Niners basically have the Pats by their balls a little bit. 
because yeah. that's the first domino to fall for the Pats, and that's their number one game plan, probably their only game plan. I don't sleep on Teddy point. Bridgewater too, especially if Carolina is going to move him. He's he's going to come in right at that nineteen San twenty million dollars. Well, San Francisco is the one. San Francisco is already yeah. check you know checking in on him. So I mean, look at that domino. It's going to happen before the draft. I don't think Bill's going to get fifteen up for. Um, you know, he might with for Jimmy G, but definitely not for Bridgewater. Don't sleep on that, especially if he if he's desperate enough to get his guy back. You know, that was the plan. I've said it a million times on the show. That was the succession plan for Brady was Jimmy G. And would he give up 15 as much as we don't want him? He's still a 29 year old quarterback, basically. He's not giving his prime. up 15 for Jimmy G. He's not I don't think up, so either. But give I'm up the second round, second round pick. Maybe he, I think he but probably the, wants the to the value of quarterbacks that you're seeing right now are going for first, you know, say what you want Carson Wentz went for a second and a third, but, but that Bill, first, what's that's the a, market? Why aren't we hearing about anybody else that's in on Jimmy G? Cause People technically he's him. not available. Uh, come on, come on, come on with that. Uh, the other guy that became available today or in the last couple of days is Sam Darnold, which is another guy Ooh. that has been linked to the 49ers that Shanahan would quote unquote be into. So the, the reason why this is important because of everything we talk about, the 49ers basically have come out and said, we're not moving Jimmy G until we make a move for another quarterback. So if, if you're a Patriots fan and, and your best case scenario at quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo, you should be paying close attention to the 49ers, uh, moves and as soon as they make that deal for the quarterback expect jimmy g here for a third rounder that's what i would look at yeah i mean like you've mentioned belichick plays even harder ball and lets him get released and that might backfire i just because then yeah he i don't know i don't anybody then he's though maybe i don't know although the point is before we get to jimmy g the point is uh, san francisco has to go trade for somebody else san francisco has to be the first domino to fall Correct. Yeah. And don't don't sleep on Kirk Cousins either because, you know, there's rumors that Minnesota wants to kind of move on for him and, and completely kind of blow it up. And they got a high draft pick where they could get, you know, get into that quarterback market in, in, in the first round top 10. So, I mean, look at Kirk Cousins. Shanahan loves him. And, and you know, Cousins played his best in Washington under under Shanahan. And, and you've seen what he's done with quarterbacks that fit his system. Matt Ryan was, a you know, MVP quarterback 2006. Went to the Super Bowl. Went to the Super Bowl. Kirk Cousins can be that guy for him in that offense, and he's on they the field the way playoffs, more than right? Jimmy G is. They went to the playoffs two years in a row. It's, and 49ers you know, have the 13th pick. You send that to the Minnesota. They can trade up and get probably one of the, like uh, Justin Fields right there. Boom. Yep. Or yeah, maybe. Uh, Mac Jones. Let's Mac wait to see. The bottom. The, the 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 thing is the 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 thing with all that is free agency starts before the draft. So can Belichick and the Patriots convince these cap casualty free agents that, hey, look, we're getting Jimmy G. The, the, everything just needs to fall. So you have to. Our team is going to be uh, you know, centered by Jimmy G, not Cam Newton. Do people believe that? Can they make that happen? Because it does not seem like the Patriots will have their quarterback situation figured out before the draft is what, it, is what it's looking like right now. Yeah. Basically. So yeah, it's same but you know, the it's NFL the NFL's inner works, like there's always those like behind the scene deals that like, yeah, this is gonna happen. We have to wait for the new league year to happen, blah blah blah. So maybe Jimmy G deals already in the works that we just don't even know about. It might be. It might be, but I think that there needs to be some more dominoes that fall within free agency oh, for absolutely. that to happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh if you're the Patriots, you need a lot of holes filled and if if I like Bill's mom. Boom. <laughs> hey, yeah. boom. Ooh, All right, right this has the... been the Civil Mind Sports Show. <laughs> the headlines, May 5th. May 5th? Uh, More in May now? Yep. Uh, March 5th. Happy birthday to <laughs> Happy my <spring>. brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. We'll see you on Sunday. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, how's that Bruins hat fit? It's actually fitting. It's actually coming in quite nicely. Yeah, you just got to stretch it, give a couple pulse. <laughs> just like I did with your mother. <laughs> oh, back to back. God damn, man. Back to back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting pretty drunk. Ray <laughs> is feeling good. Well, all right. Well, look, welcome to Oh, Dark 30, the Simple Mind Sports Show, baseball show. And uh, Ray, set this one out. Let the adults talk. <laughs> Actually, why don't you just tell us what Actually, you're drinking and then uh, chime in on some baseball talk. I can't tell you what I'm drinking. Okay. Why not? Great. Oh, Say I'm drinking, you fuck. I'm, dr- I'm drinking Pipe Dream straight out of What do you corn. think he was thinking right there? But Do you think his know. brain has white, completely he, he fucking shut little, off? Yeah, yeah. He said he was getting a little drunk drinking these IPAs from Pipe Dream. 
you know, we delicious. But this we is my second one of the night. Open, um, talking about another beer, and this idiot still thought we were on the same show, which is clearly a different show. And different it's, segment oh, of the show, uh, Ray. In this part, uh, we're drinking a different beer because this is not Stanford Pub. Da- this beers. is this is not Pub Daddy and the family. This is oh, well, now you've ruined the secret for everyone watching the shows. Someone needs a mute. And and head down this weekend because they're doing a summer summer party all four. Basically, they fill the beer the bar up with uh, beach sand, turn the heat up to eighty degrees, makes it feel like summertime. So if you're feeling like uh, the winter blues, yeah, he can't pull that one off. Yeah, me and uh, me and me and Irene have a nice date down there. I'm gonna give her a dirty seagull before the night's over. I don't know what a dirty. Now you gotta make Rich look that up. I don't know what a dirty seagull is. But I am going to guess that it's not going to be allowed at Pipe Dream. So don't be afraid, people. Head on down to Londonderry, Harvey Road. What's the what? 49 Harvey Road? 49 Harvey Londonderry, Road. Londonderry, New Hampshire. Londonderry. Pipe Dream's Brewing. They got the good stuff there. And they like the Red Sox. And so do I this year, Bill. I like the Red Sox this You're year. You're buying in? I'm kind now, of buying in, in a little in bit. Normal, in, oh, of course you are, Snip Snaps, motherfucker. In normal years. I've been buying in the whole time. Suck my dick. In normal years. Uh, I would say it's spring training. Fuck this. I, I don't really care. Show me what it looks like in April. However, the Red Sox have been so bad in the past year and a half that I'm just going the other way for no other reason that if you tell me good things, I'm going to believe them because I want to believe in the Boston Red Sox. I like your style, Rich. And it's a new regime. I've, I've said the whole uh, quote unquote hot stuff, cold stove that I've liked the minor moves by Bloom because it looks like he's doing something. He's put in the work. He's actually scouting. It's not Dave Dombrowski flashing his wallet around, buying the next uh, arm to break. So, and the evidence is kind of coming through. Some of these guys are starting to flash a little bit. Now, I get it. It's a couple days into spring training. However, let us get excited for no reason, shall we? Pavetta yes. hit 96. Uh, you got him from Philly. Uh, in, uh, and heat in the workman deal. trade, yep. he said he feels better than ever. He was hitting 92 last year. He's up four digits. That means something in, in baseball terms. Uh, the mm-hmm. other kid they got from Philly, Seabold, looked really controlled, really good in his first outing. Uh, the Garrett Whitlock got on rule five. That kid looks like he's got a nice arm. He's, got, he threw, he was throw, he's been throwing gas. Uh, yeah. Dabak is smashing. Devers yeah, is smashing. Yep. Cassius is smashing. Uh, that Jeter Downs, you can look at that kid's swing. Yeah, effortless. He, he doesn't hit for a lot of power, but he 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 has raw power. So I mean, he you know I think he was two years ago he had twenty two home runs in single A or double A, and right now his his swing is beautiful, perfect for Fenway. You know you just want to polish it up a little bit more before he makes that jump. You, you know you expect to see him next year. Nick Pavetta this year he's looking like your fifth starter. So seeing him throw ninety six is nice. He's out of options. So he can't really send back to the minors. I expect him. And I mean, this is what you want. There was a lot of good reviews coming over with that, that deal last year for Brandon Workman, especially how Workman and Hembry really sucked in a bullpen that was desperately <laughs> needing, desperately needing, um, you know, reinforcements in that pen. And see, you know, Seabold, he'll start in AAA, but it's good encouraging to see in that deal for, he basically gave away two pieces of trash for something that, you know, you have control over and something that looks promising right now especially when you're looking to rebuild I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised with Nick Nick Pavetta especially after his few starts last year and Tanner Howick too he might miss out unless they go to a six-man rotation again he has options so you might see him start in tri- AAA but he I mean he's looked well, really good <clears throat> the idea here right is like we talked about the the farm system was gutted your pitching was gutted and now you've got a handful of guys that you can throw either in triple a or against the wall and see what happens and the top of your rotation is not is certainly not set in stone Mm -mm, you got eduardo rodriguez who has a COVID heart you got eovaldi who can't stay healthy and is not frankly not a front end pitcher belongs in the bottom end with the rest of He's them. Good fourth or fifth starter. Or if oh, things yeah. work out with your starters, uh, you've heard me say this before. I love Evaldi in your bullpen. So, and then, you know, Martin Perez and Garrett Richards, these guys are just, whatever i like they, perez i like perez i mean he's gonna eat innings you know before last year he, he made every start last year and every other year he's around 30 starts he's a good inning in here but he's a but good that, that's fine, the fifth starter, but the problem bill is, is right you have too, too many of them you have bill too many was right with the richards starters. bill is right with the richards thing because didn't they just do the uh 
a forfeit, spring training forfeit with him it because was the other sucked. team. It was, it, was, it, was <laughs> yeah. a, it was the mercy rule. Mercy right? rule. Yeah, yeah. Rule, fucking. Yeah. Oh sucked. man, Bill yeah. was right. He, he does not have an arm. Bill was oh, right again. Ten million a year for that guy, Bill. You might have read on that one. My point is here with the Richards with uh, you know, Martin Perez. Yeah, you know, Mart- he's a nice he's a nice professional pitcher, but he's not somebody that you're afraid to get rid of or send down no. if a Seabold or a Pavetta or a Huak no. is coming up and look good and you're in a and you know, say you know, say you're out. Say in September you're out by seven games and you can't get there and your and your call ups come up, or even before that, or you know, uh uh Eduardo Rodriguez has to go down for uh you know a ten st- ten day stint. You're not afraid to take innings away from Martin Perez. You're not afraid no. to take innings away no. from anybody on this staff for the young guys that they're throwing against the wall right now. All of them have looked well, don't, and certainly also better than Garrett fucking Richards. Oh, he looks terrible. And, and also, don't forget Chris Sale coming back at the All-Star break. You can get eight, nine starts out of him. You might He's going to start off slow, probably three, four inning starts. But, I mean, you know, he's going to start eating some innings, and especially if you're in it. You know, I mean, he's another that's reinforcements. That's a big deal, especially again, you you expect him to come back, you know, healthier with the with after the Tommy John. And he again, I think is Hewick. He's t- kind of taken under his wing a little bit. They kind of have the, the same <laughs> hawk. <laughs> they kind of he's you heard he's under uh, Chris Sale's wing. So that's encouraging. I mean, he's your, I guess, number one pitching prospect. I think Mata is technically Mata, but, yeah. I mean, he's, he's also hockey. slinging fucking heat. Oh, yeah. He's more of a bullpen guy. So, I mean, you might see him make a team. And again, you you know, you asked, asked a question. They're in a good position. I I think they can be a 500 team, you know, especially what we saw last year. I, I, I want to see it. I expect it. The, the kids are raking. Bobby Dahlbach has three home runs in three games. He had two, uh, two what, Tuesday? or Wednesday afternoon, you know, and Wednesday, uh, Jeter Downs has, has two. You're seeing Jared Duran, who I hope makes the team out of coming out of um, spring training as the, the center fielder. He's looked pretty good. So, I mean, the, the, I, I think the future, you know, long-term is looking pretty good with, uh, you know, these prospects, are, you know, are, are starting to – you're seeing why they're valued on this team at least. And it's right. a little – glimpse of hope you have but would you do what they've been doing with major league baseball keep them down the minor league system so you don't use up one of their years of now with this team honestly no. like if you had jared duran ready to go and you you, you think just Hunt, him? you think well you think verdugo you think hunter renfro you think um uh, who, uh cordero who's right? the new guy they just signed today or Wednesday. Yeah, they just got so the the point was another utility guy. I didn't they see. Another, oh, and Marwin Gonzalez, they have too. They have Marwin Gonzalez, but yeah, uh, Ray, uh, we're recording this on Thursday. They signed another utility guy to one point seven five million. So who was not it? Gonna, I didn't see it. Uh, I don't know. You would ask that. I've been looking. I can't find it. Um, they're not going to bring. They're not going to bring um, Duran up this this year, or at least he's not going to start in camp. Uh, he's not going to start the season with them because uh, I think they want to hold control of him. I don't think that he's exactly. Quite, that's what I'm saying. Well, he's a French player too, but if he's ready, but you the know, point is they've already signed Bradley. They did it with Jackie. Yeah, Bradley but they're not going YouTube. to, you can tell by the signings that they're not going to, but I understand what you're saying. They have a lot of, they got a lot of young talent. They got a lot of young talent everywhere that, that has potential to pop. And it's, it doesn't seem like it's fake bullshit. So um, that's encouraging. And we, and we've said this from the beginning, just based on, on the, your, your starting uh, lineup, Verdugo, Devers, Bogarts, JD, uh, Dahlbach. Vasquez, Dabak. I mean, your first six to seven guys can stack up against anybody in the league in terms of, uh, it's in terms the pitching. of lineup. It's the pitching that's going to kill them. Yeah, this team's so, going to score a lot of runs, and especially Bobby Dahlbach. I mean, he could hit 30, 35 home runs at first base. He's going to strike out 250 I was gonna times. Say he's but, gonna <laughs> dude, he's going he's gonna to hit some power, and he's shown it right now. He showed it last year in a but, small glimpse, but, dude, this guy can In terms of pitching – in terms of pitching, um, you have to remember now that this is the Heim Bloom Red Sox. And go take a look at the Tampa Bay Rays and how yeah. they handle their As pitching. Blake Snell. As Blake Snell. And hopefully. Core, core has more pull than fucking Kevin Cash does. I'm telling you right hopefully now. Hopefully that mistakes. is not a, a type of thing that seeps. Now, we've been talking about this for the offseason. This is this is uh, Hyman Bloom's offseason. And next season is Red Sox offseason where they go signs, mm-hmm. sign some big free agents to fill the holes that you need probably pitching staff, whatever. Uh, my point here is the bullpen is also not a list of gutless bums, as we've no. heard in the past. You're talking about guys with a decent track record, uh, guys who can throw, not yep, a Matt ton Barnes of question RV marks no. around them. Yep. And you're talking about three, four, maybe five of them that are out there right now. 
Um, and then a and then a litany of shitbags like Ryan Brazier trying to make the fucking team with his cockeyed, cockeyed neck, mm-hmm. cockhead neck that deserves to be back in Australia, wherever the hell he was. Can before. I? I want to make one thing too. Like you mentioned the Tampa Bay, how they're pulling Blake Snell and stuff. Again, Core is not going to do that. Just look at his World Series. You think right to David Price letting him game five pitching over seven innings. He saw it earlier on, dude. He he's not one of those. He'll tell those guys to shut the fuck up and you, and just go out there and you know he's one of those guys. He Kevin Cash is a guy that got a break coaching them you know managing the, the uh, tampa bay so i mean i don't see that yeah that. i don't and i don't i think that's a red sox thing too i you know it's not a tampa bay gone. Race. remember bloom's Your, gone uh, when they're pulling fucking oh yeah, yeah i'm just You're, saying you know that's the tampa their bay Rays and kevin cash you're there because our system put you there these are a bunch of no-name yep. kids that are getting there you better follow the system this is the boston red sox and you're on prime team you, you know you're about to go win it you don't pull your pitcher Pedro Martinez mm-hmm. got the extra innings and it cost him. You're, it's, I, I just think it's. Well, a like I said, I mentioned game five. He went back Bloom out doesn't have pitches. the pole. You're right. Hyman Bloom does not have the pole um, organizationally. What about too. the nerds up front, up top? All Alex Cora has to do is say, I won this fucking World Series, dude. Listen to me. Shut the fuck up. I don't know if it's all I, uh, Alex Cora, Bill, because he's uh, coming off a cheating scandal and he's also a big numbers guy. I just think as an organizational feel and fit, the idea of pulling your ace in the sixth inning in a it's big not game happening here. doesn't no, happen. happen here. No. <laughs> Tampa it's Bay not. has never had an ace. Like the Red Sox have had ace after ace after ace. And this is David Price. Never... Uh, Tampa Bay had a lot of really good all star pitchers. Yeah, Tampa Bay said some of the best pitchers in the league. Yeah. They just couldn't pay them when they have time was up and then they walked or they trade them because they're dumb. Either way, it, you know, uh, hopes are high, and it'll Number be. Mac they Marza. lost. They it's lost lovely. to the Orioles today on Thursday, six <laughs> four or whatever. Uh, so let's, you know, I, the point here in O Dark Thirty is there is hope, and hope is dangerous. But uh, you didn't talk hope. about the big. You didn't talk about the biggest hope. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jackie Bradley Jr. is gone. Oh, Two for twenty four to Milwaukee. Good for I them. Mean, that was the biggest rumor. They they came. Hyman Bloom didn't fucking overpay for Jackie Bradley Jr. Bravo, Hyman. It just annoys Bravo. me the way they treated him last year when he should have been traded at the deadline. They had no intention uh, to sign him. P- he should have been. The gone. PR department said, "No, no, no, no. He's a African American. You just hired a black <laughs> female in the organization. That's you why he's gone him. now. That's yeah. why he's gone now, Bill. Come on." Rags on the wall, bro. Keep up, Bill. Keep up. I'm not, Come on. I'm all, I've caught up. I've, that yeah. slime bag, globe owning, fucking creep ball with the glasses. Douche bag, was, motherfucker. They knew exactly what that was going to look like. You trade Mookie Betts and Jackie Bradley Jr. In <laughs> we can't do that. It's ridiculous. No one even would have thought it if they traded him. That would no. not have thought. That would only come up in the dregs of the internet with with asshole trolls, and then it would have been made a thing. And that's what Larry Lucchino and John Henry and these pricks over there were thinking. And I, I honestly do believe that that was a part of it because you're right, Bill. Jackie Bailey Jr., there was opportunities to trade back Jackie Bailey Jr. for real return. At, was it like Pittsburgh last year? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was giving up like a haul for him last year. I thought for like pitching prospects. Pittsburgh was out. Pittsburgh was terrible. They oh, was were it, Pittsburgh? For, it wasn't Pittsburgh because they were fighting for the um, – I think they were what the worst, they were the worst team in the league yeah. last year. So I thought know, it was he, like pitching prospects from like their minor league system. It would have been if they were fighting for a playoff spot, but they were number one all year. They were fucking terrible. Yeah, they have the first pick in the draft. Ben Charrington's over there. I was surprised they didn't sign him, honestly. You know, another Red Sox guy. He's from the Charrington era. I just there's still people chirping about JBJ like these great people... defense, but again, you replaced that last year oh, with Kevin Pillar. Terrible, you, dude. Look, Shh. look at Kevin Pillar. Kevin Pillar is, has multiple goal gloves, one of the best outfielders in, in all of baseball, and you signed him last year for under three million dollars. That's what he gets. That's and he's a better hitter than Jackie Bradley. Yeah, he's older, but I mean, million again, dollars. he got in the National League for a team that's desperate. Lore, Lore, Lorenzo Kane sat out and he's last not year. Even that COVID. fast. He's not that great of a base runner. Like I just two seventy last year. Just, he did he did well in the sixty game. Did two seventy. Fuck twenty twenty. I yep. he had, what did he have well, two before that? Year before that two forty, two thirty eight. Like twenty it was lower than that. I thought he had yeah, 20, over twenty home runs too. I mean he's got he's got a little pop. He'll get hot at the right time. You it's know, the National League too. It's a weaker division, so I mean he might flourish. whatever. I still just don't get the people that you know. Uh, in twenty seventeen, we had Mookie, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Ben Intendi. Now they're all gone. I don't like it. Like I hate it. What is it? Win, dance, repeat. Oh, you can't do that anymore. Ooh, oh, no. Ooh. Did they, didn't they stop that when uh, in the World Series year? They were all done with that dumbass shit. Because <laughs> people made fun of them and they got mad. Ugh. Um. All right. Well, we, way to end on a negative note after a lot of happy talking about Sox. the Red Sox. Go Sox. <laughs> I, was, I thought that was a great, uh, great. 
Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! This has been Oh Dark 30, Simple Mind Sports Show. Uh, what we say? When's opening day? April, April 1st. 1st. April 1st. The fans are back March 12th. 22nd. 22nd. I don't do dates good. Clearly. Today, yeah, May every 5th. time you let people in, it tells you what date it is when you like you click in and on the waiting screen, it's like March 4th. It's like, here you go, you dummy. Read that. Oh. Do I click in, Bill? Do oh, I but click you in? let us in. I'm assuming it fucking Bill pops did up. get a PlayStation 5 you today. You cannot yell at me and you, you when you go assuming, Bill, And it's dinner time. You prick. Oh, what are you having for dinner, Bill? Lasagna. Did you make it? Not this one, no. Is it frozen? No. Are you going to put it in a plastic red solo cup because you hate the whales? You fuck bag. See you no. next week, boys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Paper plate, though. Fuck the turtles. <laughs> Pillow just wants to see this earth burn, burn. I'm not gonna live long enough to see it burn. I'm not the don't, only one. Don't play with our emotions. You didn't get a PlayStation. Don't tell us you're gonna die soon. Come on. I mean, come on. Can't I'll make me happy. One. One. I'll get one one day. You can't Wait, make me happy all day. We're living the. Uh, <laughs> we're living the Goodwill hunting scene when uh, Ben Affleck is just like, one day I just want to show up to your fucking house, and you're not there. You don't come tell me that you know you're leaving. You just fucking leave. One day, we're just going to open up the Zoom, and Bill's just not going to show No! Up. It's a secret for the listeners. We text Bill, and half the time he doesn't respond, and Rich and I are thinking, well, is this the day he's dead? <laughs> and one day, we he won't These respond. guys are going to be we'll dead! We'll start the show. He'll never show up. And, we'll be uh, bitching that he's, like, not answering our texts or emails and be like, oh, fuck, he really did bite the bullet. I went Could to happen any day. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like them apples? Oh, all right, I'm out. Bye, boys. It's not your fault. <laughs> Bye, Bill. <laughs> Actually, that's what Bill needs. He needs Robert Williams. All right. Robin Williams. Robin Williams. It's not your I, fault. I love me some Robert Williams. Hey, Bye-bye. it's not your fault.